with segment five, a short segment, I hope, uh, sewing Rachel's violin, violet violin bag. Um, this is the inside, inside out, and I've sewed the necks on. It's hard to see because of the colors, but um, this neck doesn't have to go to the top because it'll make the whole thing too thick, the inside neck. And then um, where I have the secret side zipper, I've covered it up um, with leather. That's kind of looks really funny on the inside, but that's that. And once you turn it right side out, it will require hand sewing on the inside. However, before you do that, I have this piece of steel and I'll cut a piece for the neck so I can roll it up. I'll need to cut it with this giant scissors, round the edges so they're not sharp and cover it in um, duct tape. Good for everything, even violin purses. And then I'll take this big giant pliers and scroll, turn the scroll, and that's the fun part. <laughs> but I'm busy. Um, the violin turned out a wonderful shape. Um, however, she's going to hold it differently than the other violins I've made before, which I'll show you later. And it could lose its shape if she feels it real heavy. So overnight I'm soaking some leather um, to see if it's a good enough strength. Leather is thicker than I'd like, but it's what I've got. Um, when you wet leather and then shape it, it's supposed to hold its shape and be very stiff. So what I'm thinking, I'm just doing an experiment for tonight, that I will wet it and put it in a baggie inside this purse and put it in my hot car in the hot sun. And then I will be able to slip it between the inside and the outside of the sides. That way there'll be something hard in it. Um, instead of using the cardboard that they usually use in purses. This is Becky Chaffee um, with, I believe, segment six of Rachel Barton Pines um, making of her violin. Um, I searched for two days, I think, for um, the right thing to go on the top of the purses decorations. Rachel wanted sequins, but I couldn't find any that were decent. And what I settled on that was the best was a plastic decoration. And everyone agreed from my art teacher to my husband. This black and white was amazing. This, I'm sorry, black and, black and rhinestone is amazing all the way around. However, the back is plastic and I have too much, I have a lot of trouble and I, putting plastic on this amazing leather purse. Um, you haven't seen, I don't think, the final version of the scroll. Um, so I found somebody, a friend of mine, while I was walking this morning, told me about the store I didn't know about, and I found this bracelet, and they only had one, and it's the exact right size. If I twist it around the edge and cut the um, clips off the end, hey, um, things that are the same on both symmetrical art and, and decorations. And uh, even though a violin is some selectric, uh, symmetrical, um, this is not the right thing, but it's all I have right now. But we saw something in the store. I didn't want to buy it. I'll go to the craft store. So just a single strand of these I'll put on the other side. Um, and I still need to do the F holes. I found um, at Michael's craft store... I found these. I think they're just a hair too big, though, for the ends of the F-holes, but they're the right shape. We'll see if I end up using them or not. That might be too much. I'll probably do black beads, hand sew black beads with the F-holes, and then maybe or maybe not put this rhinestone end on either end. So this is pretty awesome. I the closest store to get another one of these is Johnson City, two hours away. I'm not going to drive that far. Um, I don't know. So I think I'll do the uneven thing plan of ones that look just like this strand. This is not quite. Um, so to show you the rest of the finished purse, I carried it around. Rachel's going to carry it on a hand, um, hand strap. I carried it around like this, and it was the shape was beautiful. However, after a day of carrying it around, this outer leather stretched a little. 
little bit out of shape. So I knew from previous visits to the leather store that if you have the right kind of leather and you completely wet it and let it dry, it will keep its shape and be stiff. So I wetted this. I wet it. I wet this. And I'm letting it dry a little. If I let it dry a little, then I can put it inside here. I'll cut a slit into the velvet lining. And since I already sewed the end button on, I can't slip it under there. It's very, very hard to sew through the leather with by, with by hand. I have to pull the needle through with tweezers, and even then I broke just a hand sewing. I broke a needle. Anyway, to finish showing what I've got with you, oh, by the way, the hand strap that will go on this, and I, I will stamp Rachel's name into this, has turned pinkish, but it's not the dark red. They told me at the store when I asked, they said if I rub it with olive oil and put it back in the sun, it'll get more of this brownish red color, so that's what I'll do next. And I have a burner kit. Um, I would really like to stamp it. The look is deeper, um, more depth. Uh, I, I'm sorry, stamp Rachel's name into her um, handle. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to put it, send a notice, $30 to buy it. I, I had one around and I can't find it. Who knows, maybe I finally gave it away. Anyway, to show you around the purse as it is now, I found this leather zipper pull which is quite nice so here's kind of a secret pocket in the back um, it's impossible doing things with one hand but so that's the back side and this is clipped around this I didn't finish sewing this on just like the um, end button I'll put a jewel maybe I'll put a bigger jewel on top of it I don't know yet. maybe I'll put yeah we'll see and then I'll also do the same so this keeps open like this and holds programs, CDs, or whatever you want. And or you could that's closed, or you can have this open. And I am going to oh this thread. I didn't finish sewing this button on. I actually did I already tell you this? I forget. I actually broke a needle. It's so hand sewing needle. It's so hard. I have to pull it through with this. And boy, this um, pig skin is so tough. Um, I guess that's why they made footballs out of them. So I'm going to put another one of these on here. Maybe I'll put the large jewel on the lower one and the smaller jewel like the end button, wherever it is, <laughs> over the top one. The back, that's the amazing side. We're going to add a stiffener. We're going to add the strap. And then, I guess I showed you, I found this cool pull. And then the inside, um, I tore, I had sewn jewel, or glued jewels across here. I managed to tear them out without wrecking anything. They're part of the plastic is why. I hope to get these out if I can't do well. And then cover it with the uh, rhinestones or something that matches. And then I think I showed the, you this before. This is a Velcro. This is a pull tab to help. It's pretty big. It fits rosin and candy, whatever you want. It's a purse. <laughs> or it's a gig bag if you want to bring it on stage. And this, I showed you before, um, has a magnetic button, a purple magnetic button to match. I actually purchased um, purple sunglasses to go because there is a place to put your glasses right here. And so, I, to remind her that that's what that is. Oops, I missed it because I don't have my glasses on. Let's see. There it is back there. There. So the glasses hang in there over that. And then, oh, I need to go put the carabiner in. So that's about that for today. For now and today, it's getting closer. It usually takes me a couple hours to do the finishing touches once I've um, got it together like this. However, this is a pretty special violin, and I've made some. I've never sewed on this leather before, and this is this is emu skin, which is darn soft, so it loses its shape. So I have some extra things to do, and probably take me an extra six hours compared to others. So signing out. Thank you for listening. Bye. Seventh and final.
segment about Rachel's violin purse and putting all the fine details on was um, a challenge. Uh, I can't put a pin or a needle in this pig skin and I usually sew the beads on but I had to glue them on and I I figured something out. First you glue them onto a piece of felt and then cut around the felt the shape that you want it and then you glue the felt on but there's still the problem of glue everywhere. I need a class in gluing. So I usually, here's um, Rachel's daughter's purse, I usually hand sew this on, but um, the bead, I'm sorry, the, the button in the back of this purse into this pigskin, that took me over an hour to sew that on, and yes, I drew blood. Gluing was tough. At the very last minute, I figured out I could cover some glue a little bit with um, a black Sharpie. That solved one of my problems. I was horrified how much glue came out, and I tried to use as little glue as possible, and um, I started out using this flexible gel glue. Um, it says permanent, flexible, washable, whatever. And after a few days, um, everything started falling off. So I re-glued it back on with E6000. That's also supposed to be clear and flexible um, and stick to the leather. So I re-glued most of it. I'm worried just a segment of this has not fallen off with that first glue yet. So I'll just let Rachel know that E6000, if that falls off and not to do it herself, she doesn't want glue all over her fingers while she's practicing concertos. Um, Another problem was um, the way that Rachel holds this kind of sideways on her wrist. I was worried about it getting misshapen. I, I bought a very thick piece of leather, um, kind of like this, but bigger. Put it in, so I, I wet it completely, let it mostly dry. I put it in a plastic bag for a while while it was drying inside of this so it would dry in this shape and then put it in my hot car for a day and let it dry in that shape and then I tried to build another uh, velvet lining over it on the inside. Oops, I just remember there's a surprise in there. There's a little wallet and um, here is the sequence that Rachel originally asked for. That's kind of a teaser. Um, I, I bought her matching purple um, sunglasses for fun. I was opening this to show you the lining. You really can't see it, but I had a, I sewed in a second velvet lining on top, and for places I couldn't reach, I glued in. I'm sure she'll be able to see spots. So that one problem solved is it won't go out of shape when she holds it with heavy things in, in different directions. Another problem solved, partly, was cover the, the glue up with black Sharpie. And then uh, another problem, the beads falling off, change glue. And initially, I, I actually started with Monster or Gorilla Glue. I thought that worked on everything. Um, and then another, the nightmare I had was this zipper was so wavy and open up, it looks a little wavy. But finally, like the night before last night, I stayed up all night because it's pretty straight now. There's a few little ways, but pretty darn good. Um, what I thought of is, um, is it called horse hair? For, I sewed it into my wedding dress and um, I did not keep this flower kind of out of the way and glue it is pinned on but not completely glued on because just in case Rachel doesn't like it I love it myself she can just unpin it and put something else on um, so I put this horse hair or I can't turn it I sewed this by hand I went up and down and up and down the sides of the zippers very stiff um, in the olden days it was horse hair and it goes in the hem of a wedding dress if you want it to flow and have a large flowing shape on the floor. It goes into the hem and so, uh, there's a few tiny things but they're not much. Um, and when that hangs over <laughs> it covers it but compared to how it was it's great. I'm very satisfied. And then there was the question of stamping versus heat burning. 
um, Rachel's name into this. And uh, I tried to use my heat burning letters to stamp and I rigged up something and pounded them in and made quite a mess the way I did it. And um, it didn't look that impressive. So I tried to heat stamp it in on top. I burned it in, but it still didn't show up that well. So I guess not exactly matching, but coordinating. And then I had fun. I, I sh should have made deeper holes because um, these can fall fall off if they're sticking out more and they are. I was scared that I might make a mistake and just make a big holy mess in it. So I stopped. But um, so I put these diamond fake rhinestones or rhinestones are fake. And they did, they both fell out initially because the wrong glue. So I redid it with E6000 and hopefully that works. Same um, that tuning pegs, the insides are twisted uh, pins, very strong, strong pins um, that I found that were long enough to go through these or rock-like tuning pegs. So I put some extra jewelry back on it to try to cover the, uh, the points so no one would get hurt on it. I made a matching and it was very hard with this stiff stiff uh, pigskin suede a matching bow tie um so i thought that gave them more options for posing and more exposure for my violin with a husband and a bow tie and purple purple glasses inside we'll see after she receives it so that was a big job, but a fun job. If I made a third more, a third one, if somebody orders pretty quickly, it'll be pretty perfect because I haven't made a handmade one in a while. Everybody's ordering the manufactured ones, or mostly, or, or ones that I made quite a while ago already made up. I've got the price quite a bit cheaper. Minimum weight. If I make a third one, if somebody orders right away, it will be perfect because I've run into every single mistake. A uh, mistake with the zipper. Oh, I put, initially, I did put a lining in, but I didn't use the stiffest lining I have, and I think the inner, the lining stretched right along with the leather, and even though you can't even put a pin in it, it's stretchy, and so it, I ripped out the zipper three times, and each time it still was wavy and stretched out, and then I did this perfectly. I learned my lesson um, first try. So if you order pretty quickly a handmade one, it'll be pretty darn perfect. Thank you for listening. I don't know if anyone will have listened this far, but signing out, this is Becky Chaffee of Violets by Becky.